On today's show, Ferrari's brand image takes it on the chin. Automakers are spending a fortune to develop high-tech headlamps and the big fight that Nissan had internally over the design of the new Murano. All that and more coming right up on AutoLine Daily. This is AutoLine Daily for February 17 of 2015. Automakers are pouring a fortune into developing new headlamps. And it's not just about illuminating the road. Headlamps are now playing a key role in creating the brand identity of a car. Land Rover is adopting LED lamps for the Evoque and wants the outline of those lights to become a signature part of its styling. It will unveil that at the Geneva show next month. And that's where Lexus will unveil a new concept, the LFSA. And what do you think it's highlighting in this teaser shot? Why, the headlamps, of course. Notice how Lexus is carrying some of the lighting onto the lower sides of the front fascia. Up to now, Cadillac has been the most aggressive in carrying the lighting down into the front fascia. Looks like others will follow suit. Audi, which has been a pioneer in LED lamps, is taking the next step with laser lamps, which will be an option on the R8. Laser lamps can be made smaller than LEDs, yet put out nearly twice as much light. Audi says you can spot them because they put out a blue light. These high-tech lamps are head-turners, but we shudder to think what they might cost. Remember, last year we reported that the cost to replace those Audi LED lamps at the dealership is $3,200 a piece. Speaking of design trends, last week Kia revealed a teaser image of a concept it's going to have in Geneva, but apparently the company couldn't wait for the next month's show, and it just released pictures of the new car called the Sport Space. As you can see, it's a large station wagon. Automakers are experimenting with all kinds of vehicle profiles, trying to come up with a new look. So this makes us wonder, Are designers going to start experimenting with station wagon shapes to break out of the clutter? We'll have to keep an eye on that. Still to come, Ferrari's brand image slides down the rankings. Chevy charts out the history of horsepower on the Camaro and the wrangling that went on inside Nissan over the design of the new Murano. Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone Tires, your journey our passion, and by Dow Automotive Systems, breakthrough technologies for lightweight vehicles. Could the firing of longtime Ferrari chief Luca Di Montezemolo and the announcement of the brand going public have a negative effect on Ferrari's image? Well, according to a study by Brand Finance, it sure does. Every year, it tests thousands of the world's top brands to determine which are the most powerful and the most valuable. For the last several years, Ferrari held the title as the world's most powerful brand, but it slipped this year down to the number nine spot. The slide could also be due to the fact that Ferrari has not won an F1 title in a number of years, and last season it even struggled just to be competitive. You know, it's pretty amazing to see how much horsepower automakers are stuffing under the hoods of their cars. And Chevy just put out a graph that highlights the massive jump that's taking place. It created this chart on the history of the Camaro, which has seen its horsepower dip to as little as 88 ponies during the oil embargo of the 1970s to slowly climb to around 320 in the late 90s and early 2000s. Then it takes a massive jump around 2010 and keeps on going right up to the 580 horsepower that the Camaro tops out at today. And remember, all this is at a time when fuel economy and emission standards only got tougher, so it's an impressive feat of engineering. You know, it's not easy coming out with a new car, not even for established automakers. And it's rare for chief engineers to stick their neck out and take a big risk. But that's exactly what Nissan did with the new Murano, and that story is coming up next. For the people at Dow, racing is a sport and a science. We enjoy one and learn from the other. 
But like most competitive people, we like winning at both. This is the human element at work. Dow. There's more car news and industry insight from the AutoLine Network every day. Take a moment to click that subscribe button. You'll never miss another AutoLine episode. On last week's AutoLine After Hours, our guest was Chris Reed, the overseas chief engineer of the new Nissan Murano. There was an internal struggle at Nissan to decide which way to go. With a conventional design that was easier to engineer and manufacture, or with a bolder design that looked more like a concept car. In the following clip, Chris Reed talks about why he fought for the daring design. We'd already w kind of whittled down the designs. We got down to two. And we have this thing called, you know, go with six, then go with three, go with two, go with one. It's like a big transition where you finally get all your energy onto the last model, which was this one, of course. So we were at a point where we had this kind of uh, a, you know, a very nice looking Murano, the next generation Murano, then we had this one. <laughs> and in reality, all the teams were saying that, it was like a week before the selection, they were saying that, that people were actually kind of making fun of this one, saying like, like, like the styling team, saying like, we'll never be able to do that. Why are they, they, they haven't met any of our criteria. We, we're not gonna do it. So I recognized that the engineering teams were already making their decision and I was like, no way, look at that thing. We're gonna make this work. So at that time, it was in San Diego. So we, I, got, I got a body guy, I got a stamping guy, we got the aerodynamics guy, we had a safety guy, and um, lamp guy, exterior guy, and we just got on a plane, like literally in like very short notice, and just flew over there. We met the, uh, this guy named uh, Alfonso Abasio, and, uh, and uh, the, the head of the styling there in uh, San Diego. Now head of Infinity. Yes. Design. Yes, very good. And, uh, and his, uh, his protege there, Ken, and we, uh, we sat down, and it was like, they were having trouble getting, we're getting the communication perfectly, and we just worked it out in a, few, in, a, in a handful of days. And then, of course, working it out means taking some risks. Like, we knew we were over criteria in a bunch of areas. And finally, we got the confidence level, went back to Japan for the, for the competition, and I could commit to say, we'll, we'll deliver. You know, and of course, it's not just me, but it's everybody's energy, and I'm just the you know, spokesperson at that point. But we committed to it, and everybody picked the model, and then that's what we got. There's a lot of great info about the development of the new Murano in that show. So if you haven't done so yet, you can watch that entire episode right now on our website or our YouTube channel. Speaking of After Hours, be sure to join us this Thursday night when our guest will be Oliver Schmidt from Volkswagen. Backed by popular demand, Oliver sure knows a lot about powertrains. In fact, he's being reassigned back to Germany to head up powertrain development for the VW Group. So join me and Gary Vasilash to get some of the best insights as to what's happening in the auto industry right from the very people who make it happen. But that wraps up today's report. Thanks for watching. Please join us again tomorrow.